a powerful typhoon lashed the northernmost islands of the Philippines Monday, prompting warnings and mass evacuations. Typhoon Krathen was last tracked over the coastal waters of Balintang Island off the provinces of Cagayan and Batans with sustained winds of up to 175 km per hour and gusts of up to 215 km per hour, according to government forecasters. The slow-moving Krathen was blowing westward and could strengthen into a super typhoon when it veers northeastward Tuesday toward Taiwan, they said. There were no immediate reports of casualties or damaged residents, locally renowned for their resilience against seasonal storms, strengthened their roofs with ropes, covered windows with wooden boards and secured their fishing boats away from the sea two days before the typhoon hit, he said. Hundreds of villagers were evacuated away from the coast and flood-prone communities in Cagayan province, where power outages were reported. Classes in all levels were suspended Monday in several northern provinces as a precaution, officials said. Sea voyages were also halted in northern towns and provinces being battered or threatened by the typhoon, locally called Julian, officials said. About 20 storms and typhoons batter the Philippines each year. The archipelago also lies in the Pacific Ring of Fire, a region along most of the Pacific Ocean Rim where many volcanic eruptions and earthquakes occur, making the Southeast Asian nation one of the world's most disaster-prone. In 2013, Typhoon Haiyan, one of the strongest recorded tropical cyclones in the world, left more than 7,300 people dead or missing, flattened entire villages, swept ships inland and displaced more than 5 million in the central Philippines. The 23rd arsenal of Russia's main missile and artillery directorate that was struck by Ukrainian intelligence last week, had received a large batch of anti-aircraft missiles from a base in Belarus prior to its destruction, Belarus media reported. The arsenal is located near Oktyabrsk village in Russia's Tver region and was attacked on September 21. According to the report, the 23rd Arsenal received ammunition from the 1,562nd separate anti-aircraft repair and technical base located near the Belarusian city of Osipovichy. This was the largest batch of ammunition from Belarus delivered to this arsenal during 2024. According to the report, the missiles for the anti-aircraft missile complexes were delivered to the military depot by rail. The total volume of cargo was 94 semi-cars with missile weapons for air defense systems in containers, as well as five cars with security. The approximate time of dispatch of the groups of wagons is the late July and early August and the cargo was defined as explosive materials. The loading of one semi-wagon ranged between 20 and 30 tons. It should be noted that during the attack on the 23rd arsenal, the facility was almost completely destroyed. In addition to the warehouses themselves, the railway infrastructure located on the territory was also affected. Apart from the military depot in Tver, Ukrainian intelligence struck another arsenal near Tykoretsk in Russia's southern Krasnodar region that was one of the key arsenals in the logistics system of Russian troops. At the moment of the attack, there was an echelon delivering more than 2,000 tons of ammunition, including from the North Korea. Fire and explosion had taken place in the areas of both military arsenals following the attack. Russians have launched artillery strikes on their own soldiers surrendering to Ukraine in eastern Donetsk region. 
The incident occurred in the direction of Kurakovsky town in Donetsk region's Pokrovsk district after Russian troops launched an attack on the position of Ukraine's 33rd Mechanized Infantry Brigade and related units. However, the Russian attack was stopped. After yet another failed attack, seven Russian servicemen surrendered as they were bombed by a Ukrainian drone. The drone started leading Russian servicemen to the position of Ukrainian soldiers. However, Russian artillery opened fire on Russian soldiers, killing some of them. The video posted on Ukrainian telegram channels shows Russian hostages laying on the ground before they come under artillery attack. Not all Russian servicemen in the area made it to Ukrainian captivity.